Hi, I'm Mahara. I'm with Farland Doro. Hello, how are you? Hi, how are you? I'm Mahara. Good. Mahara, yeah. Yeah. Wonderful exactly. to meet you. <laughs> I'm it's a pleasure to meet you too. And what are you thinking about RD Summit so far? Are you enjoying the event? RD Summit is a crazy, fantastic circus filled with a bunch of wild animals crazy about sales and marketing. This is my crew. I know, right? <laughs> You've been in the sales market and also a startups market for more than 10 years, right? And you were actually talking about sales. How was your speaking? It was great. It was a lot of fun. This is what I live for. Whoever knew that I could get paid to just talk? If my parents only knew when I was six years old at the dinner table, blabbing on like an idiot, asking me to politely, okay, please be quiet, allow your brothers and sisters to get a word in edgewise. Who knew? that people would listen to me on a grand stage. So it's a dream come true. But it's also beautiful to be here, to help, to talk to people, to have fun. And for me here, it's only karma. It's only karma. Nothing, no, I'm not giving away consulting or looking to sell CDs or I'm not even promoting for a company right now. It's purely just to be here to help. And so it's been wonderful. That's awesome. I mean, we have 8,000 people waiting for this knowledge and to understand a little bit more about your market and all the digital marketing strategies and sales as well. And talk a little bit more about sales and the theme of your speaking. Uh, what would you say would be like the first tip that you would give for someone that is just starting to be a salesperson? Hmm. If you're starting out in your sales career, you want to learn from the best that you possibly can. Making the mistake of going to a company where you think you're going to make a lot of money or that has a lot of leads or they've sold you the dream, the most important thing when you're first starting out in sales, work for somebody really good. I had four amazing mentors early on in my career and I didn't really even look for a mentor. I was just being curious and asking questions and wanted to learn. But I think it's really helped me accelerate my growth in this part of my career and, and also the income that you can make, the impact that you can have. So I would say it's early on, it's all about learning from the best. It doesn't have to be the best, the best. Like you're not going to be able to go and sit beside Mark Benioff, the, the CEO of Salesforce, but find good, credible people that know what they're doing and know what they're talking about. I'd say that's absolutely number one. And then sales is hard. You can, you can have a big impact in sales. You can make a lot of money in sales, but because it's hard to do. And if you're early on in your career, you'll realize that your attitude is the number one determinant as a young sales professional, as a sales professional for your whole career. Your attitude is the number one determinant of your success from what I've seen. That, that's awesome. I mean, uh, sometimes we have uh, the chance to talk and to speak to someone or even your manager and sometimes we do not interact with them to understand and to learn exactly from the best. I mean, sometimes people miss this opportunity and I think it's a, a waste of our time, right? And you talked about also some skills and abilities that this person should have, just like attitude. But what would you say is like one of the main skills that someone that is searching for this career or even managers that are trying to hire a new salesperson should look for? So if we talk tactically in terms of skills, sales, in a, sales is an interesting one because sometimes people don't get into sales because it's their dream and it's their passion and it's their life purpose. They get into sales because they need a freaking job. And that's okay because sometimes that path that you're going down, there's a reason you're supposed to be going down it. But tactically speaking, to be really good at sales, whether you love it and you're passionate about it and this is going to be your career, or you fall into it for another reason, there's both an art and a science to sales. So the art to sales is understanding who you're talking to and connecting on a human level. When you're on the phone, actually just like having a conversation and connecting. And there's something to that. There's a, there's a certain finesse that some people have naturally 
and sell people can develop. So that's the art part of sales, and it's 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 a thing. You need to have it. And then there's the science. So that's understanding the deal process, the methodology to understand if this customer is for real and if this deal is actually going to happen. Because yes, there's a lot of artsy, touchy, feely, you know, having fun in terms of being sales. But then there's also getting down to brass tacks and making your number. Because it's important to make your number. You want to grow the company. You want the company that you're working for to do well. And to do that, you really have to have a science and a process by which to understand the 100 companies that you're talking to, which are the 12 that you should be talking to? Which are the eight that are going to buy? And of those, which are the four that are going to help you double your quota? So it's an art and a science, tactically speaking, to be successful in sales. And talking about science, and something that has changed a little bit in the sales industry is the outbound and inbound salesperson that are actually starting to use more data, starting to talk more about like qualified leads and opportunities instead of wasting time with so talking to someone that will not buy or does not have the feed for your product. But what would you think, what do you think about this change and what was like the biggest challenge of doing it for someone that usually uh, is adapt and used to work as outbound salesperson and is going to inbound salesperson and is not actually uh, used to use that much amount of data, that much amount of statistic? Okay. So, so let's talk about data and then let's talk about outbound. So, and we can touch on some of the technology and some of the data. You still have to have, no matter how many tool sets and how much data you have, you still have to have people that have the guts and the intuition to make a call. So for example, at my last opportunity, I, I tasked inbound reps with what a good inbound lead looks like and what the criteria for that is. And also for outbound, it's very important that, that they need to have some direction for what a good ICP or ideal customer profile looks like. And sometimes you're not gonna have data early on to identify that. So I made a call and I said, this is what that profile looks like. And it was a very distinct profile, a certain position title internally, uh, a certain geographic region, a certain segment of a company or a, an industry. And then with that, the outbound team, for instance, they could take that direction and, and formulate messaging to actually target this specific set of buyers. And I said specific set of buyers very intentionally. Once they target them with the right message, and it's easier to have the right message when you're targeting specifics, they could then put it into an email cadence. So a tool that I really like is um, outreach.io. I think outreach is great. They're a great uh, cadence tool for messaging a prospect seven or nine times. And it's not all just call to action. Hey, I want to talk to you. Hey, I want to talk to you. It's like, hey, here's a case study that we did on a company that's relevant to your space. That's it. You're just helping with information. That outbound SDR can then look at the cadences and look at the email and understand what percentages are actually being open what percentages are being responded to. And then they can actually take those messages and refine them more and increase their response rate, AKA deliver content to the customer that they actually want. So it's a really beautiful thing to have that, don't discount the human element, but then to have the tool set and have the data to more effectively target and also effectively help customers is, is what's happening today. So talking a little bit more about how to manage a team and establishing KPIs for your sales team, what would you say is like the most important KPI or at least a direction that a manager should look at to have like to manage well their team and to get good results with the sales? Early on, so let's talk about one to ten million dollars. If the company is about one to ten million dollars in revenue and ARR. The most important KPI or metric is how many deals are you going to close this month? It's all that matters. Especially early on, everyone's talking about pipeline and I've got this many deals in my pipe and we've got this much velocity through each stage of the pipeline. That's all bullshit. Especially at one to five million dollars, 
how many deals are you going to close this month and you better effing close them. That's it. For, um, for SDRs and outbound SDRs, how many qualified opportunities are you going to set up for calls this month? That's it. As you progress later stage, top five to 15 million in, in ARR, you can look at a rep's conversion rate so from lead to close, and that's important for the business because you don't want to waste leads. It's also important because when you sit down with reps, you can look at where their deals are stalling in different stages, and you can coach them. If their deal is stalling at a demo stage, well, they're probably not doing a great job talking about pricing if they can't get it to a term sheet. So you might want to work on that and coach that a little bit. But you can get any dashboard you want in Salesforce or in People AI or in all these sales tools, it is about how many deals are you going to close this month, particularly early on, and then you can get a lot fancier. That's not actually an easy task to do, right? <laughs> Well, I really appreciate the tips that you have gave us. I mean, they're really useful and they actually tips that you can start doing in your company like tomorrow or today if you have the time. So I really appreciate having you here and hopefully we can see you next year too in RD Summit, right? Are you invited? Is this an invitation? Can, I don't know. Is do you, it? Have I just been given a formal invitation to come back to RD Summit? You guys better rewatch the talk that I did this morning because there were there were a couple of expletives. Hopefully, uh, hopefully that's okay. Uh, but I, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. I would love to come back and talk next year, and um, and I would even love to open up the conference for eight thousand people strong. I make you a deal. You guys let me open up the conference. I'll speak for it to eight thousand people. And I'll learn Portuguese for next year, and I'll do it in Portuguese. How does that sound? Wow, it's a big <laughs> challenge to learn Portuguese in one year. If I was responsible for that, I will definitely take that. <laughs> I really appreciate it. I hope that you learn Portuguese, and next year is going to be more than 8,000. You bet, too. Thank you okay? so much for Thank having me. Thank you so me. much for your time and wonderful. for your interview. It was wonderful having you with us. Thank you. Obrigado. Obrigado.